Hello and welcome to the Rackspace Cloud. My name is Chad and in just a few minutes I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use cloud servers. From the home screen in our control panel we'll move over to the hosting section and choose cloud servers. On this page you're going to see a breakdown of all the cloud servers we currently have provisioned. You can have one or you can have many. Let's go ahead and add a new one from scratch. So we'll simply click add server and there's three steps to starting a brand new cloud server. First step is to choose what size cloud server that we need. As you can see there's many different options. We'll go ahead and start with the smallest 256 meg cloud server. Then We'll go ahead and give this uh, server a name. We'll call it web1. The last step is to choose the default uh, Linux distribution image that we want to have kicked on the server. There's quite a variety to choose from, anywhere from, anywhere from CentOS to Debian, uh, Fedora, and even Red Hat Enterprise Linux. There's also the ability, if you notice the user backups tab here, to kick a cloud server from a uh, backup image from one of your existing cloud servers. So if you have a default web server image uh, that you have configured and set up the way you like it and you're going to be kicking uh, a bunch of cloud servers, you can actually navigate over here and choose a backup of your default cloud uh, web server backup image and uh, kick your new cloud server from that, which saves you a lot of reconfiguration time. Uh, but since we don't have a user generated backup, let's just go ahead and uh, start from scratch. We'll choose Debian and click Add Cloud Server. We're actually going to watch the server build in real time. The smaller cloud servers take anywhere from uh, a few minutes um, on up. Uh, the larger servers can take 10 to 15, 20 minutes or so. And as we can see here, uh, the build status is going to show in real time. It's updating uh, every few seconds. While it's doing that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of this other information that's displayed here for you. We have the name of the server, the current action, it's in build mode, the age of the server, the total memory, storage, and bandwidth in and out as well as our public facing IP address. All cloud servers also have an internal private IP address. And then which Rackspace data center the cloud server is provisioned in. We can also see that backups are disabled. The server should be just about finished building. And then we'll take a look at some of the other options here in the control panel. It also flashes your root password up here at the top of the page for a few seconds and you will receive that in an email as well. As we can see the server is now fully active. We have the ability at the top of the page here uh, to do a couple different things. We can launch a live web-based console to interact with our server. We can watch the boot process uh, and even log in. We can reboot the server. We can perform either a soft or hard reboot. Let's move forward and actually do a soft reboot. We can take a look at the console here once again and watch that server boot back up. We can optionally launch rescue mode if for some reason your server has an issue and it's not booting properly or you have um, a problem with the configuration file and you need to get access to your data or to fix that. Now you can actually launch rescue mode which will spin up an equally sized uh, cloud server instance and allow you to mount the file system from your existing cloud server. That can definitely be a lifesaver. Rebuild mode allows you to rebuild the same exact cloud server, either kicking it with a clean uh, OS image or launching from a backup without losing your IP address. Reset password allows us to reset that root password in case we forget that. And then we can optionally delete the machine. Remember, cloud servers are built on an hourly basis, so if it's not a production machine and you no longer need that cloud server, uh, you can simply delete that and your uh, billing stops at that point in time. At the top of the page here, let's go ahead and take a look at these four tabs. DNS is the first tab where we can do all of our uh, domain and DNS management, as well as set up and configure reverse DNS. The backup tabs is where we enable backups, uh, which are part of the system for cloud servers from 256 megs to 2 gigs in size. Single click to enable these backups. And then we have three different options uh, for backing up our cloud servers. You can choose a daily backup window and a weekly backup window. And these are automated backups on a daily and weekly uh, basis that are performed automatically behind the scenes. And then we have the ability to perform a variable or point in time snapshot image whenever we want to. So if we have the server configured uh, nice and we want to use this as an image to kick all of our new web servers from, we can simply take a new backup image. It'll take a few minutes to perform that backup and then we'll be set. 
or optionally if you're going to perform a large upgrade on your cloud server, maybe upgrade Apache for example, you can take a variable backup uh, right before the um, right before you perform the upgrade and if for any reason something does not work out properly it's very easy to roll back to that existing um, that existing image within just a few minutes. The last tab over is the diagnostics tab. And what this allows you to do is just grab some uh, very high level diagnostic data from your cloud server. Very similar to, and it's pulling data basically from a lot of common command line tools. So we can check our um, obviously that our server's up and running, our swap and root I.O. usage and uh, server load. We can optionally grab some uh, raw stats such as uh, CPU utilization, CPU time, uh, disk and network I.O., uh, which obviously there is nothing because this is a brand new cloud server. And then we also have a couple of nice network tests to ping our server from different locations around the globe. And the last thing that I'd like to demo for you here is the ability to resize your cloud server on the fly. This is one of the neatest uh, features of the cloud servers platform and essentially what this allows you to do is uh, take your current cloud server and expand the amount of CPU allocation, memory allocation, storage allocation uh, within a few minutes time uh, with, a, with just a few clicks. On the home screen we see this resize server link. We'll go ahead and click that. And it's going to bring us to a page where we will choose what we would like the cloud server resize to. So we can go up one level to a 512 meg cloud server or all the way to a 15 and a half gig cloud server if we needed. This process usually takes a few minutes. If you're moving from a small to a very large cloud server, um, that time um, will take a little bit longer. It's really dependent on how much data that you have on your cloud server that needs to be moved over to the new host machine. Uh, but generally just a few minutes if you're moving between the smaller cloud server sizes. So we'll choose 512 megs and click resize server. As you can see, this cloud server is now queued for resize. What it's going to do is take a backup image of our cloud server as it is right now, spin up the new image, and restore all that data to the new cloud server image. And then the final step uh, is going to transfer your IP address over to that new cloud server. We won't watch this entire process because it does take a few minutes, uh, but it's just that simple with a few clicks to expand the resources on your cloud server, something uh, not so easy to do in a dedicated environment. That's it uh, for this demonstration here. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call anytime. We are here for you 24-7, or feel free to initiate a live chat session on our website. Thanks for watching.